Great power. Great power. For the fifth time, it's your boy, Sean. <laughs> What's up, Wikimaniacs? It's your boy, Sean, back at it again with another Monday episode, Reddit reading episode. It's your boy, Sean, with my homie from Dallas, uh, John. Say hello. Hello. And by default, I am now rooting for the Astros to win because the Phillies eliminated my Padres, and I'm not about that life. We were so close to a John versus Sean World Series. It would have been lit. It would have been lit. I would have gotten mad at at John (laughs) at some point. His troll game is unmatchable. But uh, it would have been fun. It would have been been. cool. It was. It Uh, wasn't. It wasn't meant to be, my guy. Maybe next season. But do you know what? Do you know what I'm worried about? What happened? Is every time that a Philly team has won the World Series, uh, the U.S. faces a financial downfall and you know what's already guaranteed for 2023 a financial downfall the recession is coming so i'm like oh so philly's gonna fucking win so did they did that happen when the eagles won the super bowl no just the world series oh world series i'm sorry i'm stupid yeah yeah yeah. so the last time the phillies won was 2008 and uh oh my god yes big recession 2008 no so i'm like wait we're already pretty much guaranteed a recession in 2023 so does that mean the phillies are winning i tinfoil hats on dun dun where's where's not ryan where's uh, chris Chris when you need him (laughs) i know sorry the last of sports guys i I know a majority of you guys don't care. That's not why you're here. You're here for the Reddit readings. So on today's menu, uh, let's see. We got from r slash chew off my chest. Oh, and as always, I got to give a shout out to our Reddit on Wiki subreddit. Uh, that's where I got all of my stories from. Again, I, uh, I'm here again asking you to share and cross post <laughs> on that subreddit because honestly, at this point, it's just a well-oiled machine. I'm not looking anywhere else. So if you want us to react to a story, the best way to do it is to share it on the subreddit. And And I've seen even some... I was going to say, Christina, I'm going to need you to edit Sean like with the the Bernie meme (laughs) when he said that I am once again asking you. (laughs) That's definitely what I was trying to do. She's been very good at adding some like meme elements on our episode. So shout out, Christina. You've been doing an amazing job editing for us. Thank you so much. I don't watch, but I know uh, people do, and we appreciate uh, all the memes being added. That's news to me. That's cool. Adding memes. Definitely put the Bernie photo. I could I could edit a photo of uh, my face on Bernie if you would like, Christina. Just let me know while you're editing. Uh, but anyways, uh, yes, these are all from our subreddit. So shout out to everybody using that. I think I didn't check, but last time we did numbers, John said we had like 300 plus, which is insane. You want the official count now? I think it yeah, went up from the, the count. I think it went up from the last time we did it. Uh any time a number goes up, I am just amazed and uh shocked and confused, but I'm rocking with it. I'm rolling with it. I like it. I appreciate you guys so much for making our jobs easier and uh yeah, John, go ahead and give us that count. The official count now is 436 members closing in to 500 wow 100 more than last week i think is the last time we recorded i want to say yes yeah so wow incredible thank you guys so much for sharing on here uh but yeah let's get to the menu uh it's your boy sean back with the the menu we got from uh r slash chew off my chest from wikimaniac Username informal underscore ad underscore 4269. A nice. Uh, they shared, I saw my husband and sister naked in my kitchen. Jesus Christ. That's some shaggy uh, shit, bro. It wasn't me. <laughs> who's, who's the Wikimaniacs that I remember? Is, is our do we have a more millennial or a more Gen Z? We are showing audience? our age. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. Okay, coming up next, we have from r slash facepalm. 
First time we've used that one, I think, from Wikimaniac Common underscore girl. They shared, I just thought this was funny, and it's titled, Let Me Ask You This. Okay. Uh, after that, we have from r slash relationship advice from the goat of the subreddit, user Turtles Can Fly 7. The goat. Pigs can swim. I forget what <laughs> number like she pigs, had. But pigs could swim eight or something like that. Yeah, what a beast. Uh, they shared my 27 year old female boyfriend, 32 year old male, only wants to have sex when we're dressed as hobbits from Lord of the Rings. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the. Oh, my <laughs> precious. <laughs> Does Gollum count as a hobbit still? No, I don't think so. Does he? Because he, he used to be, right? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. It's, it's been, been a while. while. It's, it's been, been a long time. It's I'm not like gonna lie to you. Thirty hours worth of freaking content. I ain't got time to remember all that shit. I don't, I don't think I've watched since it came out. So, oh like, but my God. I, I fucked with it heavy when it came out. I just, I just know I'm in for like a three-hour movie every time. So I'm like, <laughs> oh man, that's a lot. I can't, I can't commit to that. And last but not least, coming from user common underscore underscore underscore. I don't know why I said underscroll. <laughs> underscore girl. Common underscore. Jesus Christ. <laughs> common underscore girl. Oh my god. From R slash petty revenge. We have ruined my wedding to propose. Well, I will ruin your proposal. Oh, my God. That sounds petty as hell. Mm -hmm. All right. But before we get into the stories for today, John, why don't you keep the house, clean the house, do your thing? I am going to clean the house, warm it, whatever you want me to do, my guy. But we hell do yeah. have several reviews that I wanted to read out today. Uh, I got two. And one of them I'm going to read out. I don't know if Josh read this already because it says his name on it. But we're doing it because he's not here because he did the same with me. And also Sienna's mention because it's her birthday Ooh. today. So happy birthday, Sienna. Wow. Um, at the time of recording. Not at the time at the of time. recording. Correct. Not at the time of release. Correct. So I hope you had a very happy birthday, Sienna. Hopefully. Hopefully Josh treats you right because uh, he would be the asshole if he didn't. Um, <laughs> so this review comes from classy underscore diamond underscore life from Apple podcast title is amazing. Highly recommend five stars. Wow. I appreciate this podcast. I don't normally listen to a ton of male podcasts, but this one is hands down. Amazing. Very respectful guys who have great sense of humor. I love the takes they have on stories. Definitely worth the listen. Josh is hands down my favorite on the pod and Josh's better half. She's awesome when she's on. How do you feel about that, uh, Sean? I feel like this person might be a little fucking racist. Uh, <laughs> <just kidding. laughs> Absolutely just kidding. <laughs> Thank you for writing review and for listening to this podcast. Uh, I was just kidding. <laughs> I don't think you're racist. The white guy just, is the favorite. <laughs> <laughs> anytime somebody says Josh is the favorite, it's just funny to say. You know what I mean? I'm sure you're not racist, right? You enjoy me and John. Just not as much as our white counterpart, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Damn. You went in on that, bro. Yeah, so... I really think if uh, Josh is your favorite, uh, maybe take a look in the mirror a little bit. Uh, really, really ponder about why it is that he's your favorite. And then come back to us. This is our world, White. This, this is, is our world. world. <laughs> oh, shit. And, oh. and this one is a review from Anna L7, who I also posted on our story because it was so awesome. And this is all the way from Australia, my guy. Oh, cool. Uh, five stars. The title is Found You Guys on TikTok. Okay. Wow. I've now listened to all episodes, bro. All episodes three times over. And I feel <laughs> confident in saying that Sean, Josh, and John are actually pretty funny. Love their views. They compliment each other. 
are able to, and, and are able to bring different perspectives to each story. Guest hosts are too. Oh, sorry. Guest hosts are funny too. Love the regulars. Here's me hoping for their significant other's episode to come soon. That's definitely supposed to be happening. We talked about it during the last live show, but we yes, thank that's fucking incredible. You might have you've definitely spent more hours on this show than John or I. Uh, maybe not Josh because he edited, uh, so he's probably listened to the show like a lot, a hundred times. Uh, but and probably Christina now too. She's been with us for like two months, two and a half months, something like that. I'm sure she's heard a lot of us and is sick of us. But uh, yeah, thank you so much. Three times is incredible. That's like 300 right. hours because we have almost 100 episodes already. I think we have 100 and because I was looking at it because I just signed into our new uh, podcast host and I'm hooked up to ours and Shots and Thoughts. And I was like, oh my God, Reddit on Wiki only has like one less episode than Shots and Thoughts. And, and y'all like, been around for like almost three years now, right? <laughs> uh going on yeah three, december yeah. Yeah. december will three. be year number three holy yeah. hell so a hundred i think a hundred and five maybe by the time this comes out 106 episodes holy crap three times and then our episodes aren't an hour i feel like ever since the tiktok stuff uh and hours you know, the patrons it's it's like an hour and a half hour and some change for sure i want to so. say yeah because i remember like the first time around we tried to keep it around like 30 to 45 minutes except yeah, we tried to keep it short except you try to keep it at an hour <laughs> yours was like an oh, hour yeah. always i would always go an hour. <laughs> look at you now my but, guy i know a professional but, uh, yeah it's crazy thank you guys so much for writing reviews thank you for listening uh it's still insane to me uh, the growth and like the audience that we have and you guys are all so nice and respectful and things like that so uh, again just joking about the racist thing I don't <laughs> think anybody's racist <laughs> if Josh is your favorite Josh is our favorite too he's hot we actually get it. you're our favorite Sean we did a poll at first my uh, feelings got hurt no I'm just kidding my feelings didn't get hurt but I was like so behind the polls and it was like it was you and actually yours was like way ahead and then Josh, and then I just tied him like last second. You got the the Philippine vote. The I got Philippines the Philippines vote. vote. Yes, so I got uh, I got my which people. Is fair. I got my people. I, I will say this: like even though I did win that vote or whatever, it wasn't by a ton of votes. It was a pretty narrow race between all three of us. I just won by like maybe two votes or something like no, that. No, you won by like so, at least ten. But but. The but amount, all three of us collectively. Exactly. That was the... The option D yes. was by far the top. It is. That was like so. 83% of the vote. So that's so. why I was like, you know what? At first, I'm like, I'm so glad Sean didn't run this shit because I feel like if he was in my shoes, that's like <laughs> a mental health breakdown. <laughs> that's why I just don't... I respect you and Josh so much for... Doing a lot of social media stuff because I cannot. I just can't. <laughs> oh man. But that's all that's all for the reviews that we got today, man. If uh let's get the show started, my guy. Let's get it going. Uh yeah. First story. Uh thank you again for reviews. They're always so nice. Uh, really again, it. from true off my chest, I saw my husband and my sister naked in my kitchen. It wasn't me. <laughs> Then she got me on the counter. It wasn't me. So we the only on the lyric I know. It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyways. We're going to get DMCA'd, bro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hell no. We don't sound nearly close enough. No. All right, anyways. <laughs> I can't move. If I move, it becomes real, and I have to accept what I saw and think of what has to be uh, next. I came home from work early and saw my sister's car, thinking maybe she was dropping off some food from her job. But no. I walk in and see my husband and sister naked in my kitchen, the kitchen oh. that I paid for. As soon as I registered what I saw, I got into my car and left. I kept driving. Just driving, 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 until I found the hotel that I'm at now. I don't want to believe it. I don't know what to do. My sister, my only family, and my best friend, 
the one who's supposed to be there for me and support me, my husband, my person, my other half, the one who's supposed to love and respect me. The two most important people in my life have ruined everything. I've blocked them both on my phone. I don't want to hear any of the bullshit excuses they'll come up with. I don't want to confront this. I want to go back to this morning when everything was fine. Was that yeah. the story? Uh, yes, there is oh. an update. Oh, my God. But uh, I just want to get your first reactions to that. The last part made me sad. The saying that they wish they can just go back to earlier in time. But in reality, the reality is that wasn't probably the first time they were banging in a counter. So um, it, it's just sad knowing that it was your sibling. The Okay, I'm not saying like the, the guy was not guilty. But, you know, I feel like someone is replaceable in terms of like relationships. But your sibling is your blood, you know. And for them to be able to betray you that way, it's just sickening to hear that. So yeah, it's that's that's my super bummer. Yeah, and she's like, uh, my only family, the only family I have. You know what I mean? That's what makes it and worse. It's just like, yeah, you. It's like you put all your eggs in these two baskets, and then both uh, just ended up screwing you up. Yeah, they were scrambling each other's eggs in a kitchen. Like it wasn't Jesus not Christ. It was not pretty to see, I bet. Oh, dude, I can't imagine. Uh, uh, okay, update. Sorry for not replying to comments and not updating. Things have been hectic. I didn't think I needed to explicitly say this, but by naked, I meant they were butt naked and fucking in the kitchen. Oh, we kind of got that. I admit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we all understood. Yeah, I'm sure it. they weren't just, uh, oh, no, the sink broke. All our clothes <laughs> got wet. Uh, John, have you seen that video? Is that a video you've seen? You laugh. Uh, there's like. probably a scene like that. Plumbers. There's plumber scenes. This is, this is, never mind. That's not cute. <laughs> That's the popular genre. I mean, it's, yeah, Anyways. you know, piping in a different way. But let's let's let's. My keep God. Going. We're moving past it. Uh, <laughs> I admit mentioning that I paid for the kitchen was odd and kind of funny, but anyone who knows me knows that that kitchen is my pride and joy. So yes, when I saw my, so not, yeah. When I saw my sister and husband fucking in my kitchen, it stuck with me. And yes, they did see me. So that's like the top three things you love in this life. Just in one big mess. And the crazy thing is, I think they knew that. And it that became, makes it so much more gross. I know. Oh, and it, that, and that it, makes it so much it more It probably gross. was like, oh, man. It was probably something taboo for them. I'm not, not saying it's kink shaming, but like at this point, it's like, you're fucking cheating. And it, that was probably like, oh, yeah, she loved this kitchen. It'll probably be so much hotter if we bang here. That type of shit. That's so fucked. That's it is. so fucked. I it didn't is. even think about that. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. That's so sad. When I, when I got to the hotel, I cried for a few hours, and then I just wanted to tell someone, anyone. The two people I would talk to when something happened in my life were the two that I needed to talk about, and it was 11-something in the evening, so I wasn't going to disrupt my friends' evenings and burden them. So instead, I came to Reddit, thinking not many would see it, uh, just so a little peek behind the screen, that the initial post had 22... Point three thousand upvotes. So Damn. a couple people definitely saw it. Um, the response I received was overwhelming. <clears throat> I want to say thank you to everyone that sent me kind words and advice. Thank you so much for all the virtual hugs. I only commented once, and that is because I had so much to think about and so much to do. I appreciate all the love and support. Um, there was... There was so much amazing advice given in the comments. Although a lot of it was American-based, I still appreciate it. But one thing I did see a lot was to unblock them and keep the texts and calls as evidence. So I did that. Smart. I, yeah, that is smart. After posting and having another good cry, I knew that I had to get my shit together. I didn't have my sister or any family to help, so I had to do it myself. I started researching what my next steps were. In the morning, my friend called me saying her sister contact. Oh, my friend called me saying my sister 
contacted her, wondering if I had been in contact with her. I told her what happened, and she kindly offered her spare room and her day off work to help me sort some stuff out. What a friend. I called in sick at my job, and my friend helped uh, get things <coughs> done. I got in contact with my friend who works at a bank, and she helped me start sorting out my financials. My friend also found me a lawyer to consult with. After my phone consultation with the lawyer, I was so overwhelmed. I know now why so many women don't divorce their cheating husbands. It's such a lengthy, expensive, and emotionally draining process. I fortunately make a stable income and can support myself, and we fortunately don't have any kids. I have to remember that things aren't going to happen in one day. It will all take time. As for the house, unfortunately, <coughs> his parents bought it for us. And to be honest, after what I saw, I don't want it. I don't blame I will that. try to get... Yeah. I will try to get reimbursed for my beloved kitchen. Otherwise, it can burn for all I care. This has been a super draining process, but I know... This has been super draining, but I knew I had to talk to them. I already knew there was no coming back from my husband, and, and when I checked his messages, they said exactly what I thought they would say. Quote, I'm sorry. Quote, it's not what it looks like. Bro, Quote, we didn't mean for it to happen. <laughs> Quote, fuck? please come home. Quote, I love you. Blah, blah, blah. Just absolute bullshit. A small part of me thought maybe I could find it in me to forgive my sister as we only have each other. Don't. But after I opened her messages, all hope was lost. She used the same excuses we heard our father use when he cheated on our mother and beat us. Oh she said the God. same things our mother would say when she would excuse our dad's behavior and also beat us. Holy shit. Oh my God. I spoke to her this morning and asked her to tell me straight up who, what, when, where, and why. She told me back in July... Uh, Back in July, when I went on a girl's trip, she was at our house and joked to my husband that I would cheat on him on this girl's trip because that's always what happens. What the fuck? That's... What? Yeah. What? Uh, anyways, he said nah, and they joked about it, but she said he could <coughs> get even with me, and they ended up doing it for the first time. You called it right on the head, John. I feel like a Sean today. <laughs> yeah, you fucking called that shit. Uh, one time led to two, then to three, then to whenever they could do it. There was never any evidence or signs or anything that I was going to, that I was going to or even think about cheating during that trip. I told her that we were done and there was nothing she could do to bring us back together. I later received a call from an unknown number. It was my mother, who I hadn't spoken to in seven years. <clears throat> Turns out my sister has been in contact with her and told her what had happened. And my piece of shit mother, the same woman who beat me for breathing wrong, had the oh audacity to say, this is what I get for taking her daughter away from her. Yo, what? What in the hell? Holy fuck, your family is not great. Um, it hurts so much. I know things are going to get messier, and this is going to be a long few years. I've now lost all my blood relations. I need to get all my shit and find a new place. I want to show them that I can and I will thrive without them. Mm, baby girl, I like it. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart for all the love and advice. And to all the people in the comments that could relate to me, I am so sorry. That's it. That is <clears throat> extremely heavy in terms of how shitty her quote unquote support system or family is. And to me, the biggest villain in this situation is the sister. The oh, sister. For sure. She initiated, the, she put the oh, plant of the seed. Yeah, absolutely. This whole time, the sister has been manipulating not only her, but also the husband. And the husband is, again, the husband is not going to get away scot-free, you know? Like, he, he shouldn't have cheated to begin with. But this sister has sure. been, like, like you said, Sean, planting the seeds this whole time. Like, she'd been lusting for him at some point, you know? And she just saw that opportunity to act on it. But I think the biggest solace that I found here is 
throughout the story, <clears throat> I know in the very beginning, she was kind of claiming that's all she got, you know, them two. And mm -hmm. just hearing her like step by step saying like, hey, I'm doing these things by myself. I'm taking all these steps to get rid of the negative people in my life. This, this, and that. Like it was a progression of character development for me. And I think throughout this whole ordeal, as shitty as it was, I think she had the opportunity to find herself that she's actually a strong-willed person that, and she doesn't need to rely on negative and like toxic people in her life to keep her afloat. So to me, it is a bad experience to go through, but I think in the same time, you were able to like have a self-discovery and you're really a strong person and you deserve all the good things that's, that's going to come your way. Yeah, hell yeah. It's uh, also one thing I want to harp on is like, at the, at the beginning, like you said, she said she felt so alone. But during all those steps, you had sounds like you had pretty great friends to help you. Uh, oh, absolutely! On your on your path back to, you know, or on your new path. You know what I mean? You had lots of friends. You know, set you up with a lawyer, give you a place to stay for in the meantime. Uh, you had another friend help with you know your financial stuff. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully, you know. Uh, that's something you can dwell on as well is that you aren't alone. You have a lot of friends who are willing to help out. And also, yeah, uh, your whole family sounds so Fox. awful and I'm so sorry. Um, yes. both parents horrible, not great. You thought you, you know, you and your sister got out, but you know, I guess fucking hurt people, hurt people. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. the sister, yeah, I agree with John, is fucking insane. The devil. Uh, I have never once thought when my wife is out with a girl, she's gonna fucking cheat no, on me. No, absolutely uh, not. That's an insane claim to have, and you were definite, yeah, you definitely knew what you were doing when you said that shit. And then, even to joke about, oh, you can get even by sleeping with me, or whatever, like, dude. Yeah, fuck you. Also, the husband is dumb. Yeah, the husband's uh, dumb. Because, Thinking with his dick. Of course, the whole he's time. not getting out of this. Yeah. Dude, of of course she's not gonna cheat on you, dude. You just saw an opportunity to fucking do some shameful shit and you were all about it. Um, yeah. You know how the how she said, like, I wish I could go back to this morning when none of this ha happened. Like, I know you know this now, but you don't want that because now you know everything. You can cut the fucking pieces of shit out of your life once and for all. And then start a new life elsewhere, uh, which is probably going to be better and healthier than, you know, being oblivious to facts, the fucking negativity around you. Uh, so fucking wild. I could not imagine being in this position. I would be. I'd get violent, fucking, honestly. <laughs> yeah, like, honestly, I don't know if I would leave. If I got in my car, I think I would drive through the house. Like, yep. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you oh, probably invested man. in some good-ass knives in those kitchen. Boy, I am throwing hands, throwing shit. And actually, double fuck you to the, the sister and the the husband. Because b instead of, like, being accountable for your actions, you try to, like, you know, try to come up with some bullshit excuse that why you did this. Yeah. Fuck y'all for not being accountable for your actions, so. Yeah, what the fuck is, how the fuck is, it's not you know, what it especially because like. it's happened multiple times, how is it, it's not what it looks like. You I think it's banging, exactly bro. what it looks like, brother. There's no way it can not look like... If you're fucking somebody else and cheating, I don't know if there's a way it can look like anything else than cheating, brother. It's a real-life Shaggy song, man. God Ooh. damn. God damn it. Starting off hot, my guy. <laughs> I know. All right. Now for our second story from r slash facepalm. Uh, we have... Let me ask you this. And it's just like uh, two tweets in a row. Very short. Uh, it'll make up for, uh, you know, the first story being kind of long. Okay. So here we go. Twitter user. We'll just say user number one, number two. User number one. Condom sex simply does not count. Just hear me out, okay? This is my theory. If you wash your hands with gloves on, did you really wash your hands? <laughs> <laughs> to which somebody replied, I see your point, but let me ask you this. If I strangled you to death with gloves on, did I really strangle you to death? Oh, whoa, that's yeah. it. <laughs> shut the fuck up. It says, yeah, then shut the fuck up. 
That uh, was a zero to one hundred real quick. Yeah. Scenario. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, a lot of the comments, uh, at least on our subreddit, are like, "Oh my god, dudes who don't want to wear condoms." Great clapback though. And to which I say, uh, uh, practice safe sex, guys. Yeah. I urge all the Wikimaniacs to wear condoms because Agreed. unless you're planning for kids, you probably should not have kids. I would, I would hope. I mean, yeah. happy accidents and stuff, but like, why even have a happy accident? Why have an accident at all? Yep. Practice safe sex so you don't get clapped back. So that's my wordplay for today. God damn it. What is that, number two? <laughs> That's number two. I, I got one more left in me, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Third story before the ad break. Here we go. This is from our slash relationship advice. We have my 27-year-old female boyfriend, 32-year-old male, only wants to have sex when we're dressed as hobbits from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> All right, I will say this. I'll preface. I'll preface. Preface this. Preface. Yes, I think that's the word. Yeah, preface. Yeah. yeah. I used to say preface this. like a dumbass. So, <laughs> to be fair, English isn't your first language, it so is you not. can get away with stuff like that. Uh, oh, I can't do my first language. I can't do on in. I can't tell. It's always. I can't do it. <laughs> All right, so I will say this. I personally have my doubts on if this is real or not. I feel like this is just... Just because I can't imagine a, an adult doing this, but I guess it's the internet. Adults do a lot You'd of stuff, be huh? surprised. Yeah. Yeah. Just because it just sounds so out of this. Anyways, I'll, I'll stop hyping it up. I'll read it. My boyfriend is a Lord of the Rings super fan and... He loves to cosplay. Mm. Personally, I prefer the Hobbit trilogy, but that is not relevant. That's clue number one that I think this is fake. I don't think anybody likes the Hobbit more than they like Lord of the Rings. <laughs> I'll digress. Uh, um, I love my boyfriend and enjoy hanging out with him, and we get along great. We have been dating for only 21 days, but we have known each other for a few years now. Okay. The main cause for me to post, uh, the main cause for me to post here, began when we became sexually active. Go okay. Ahead. Give a dap for that. You know what I'm saying? You know, hell yeah. When we have sex, my boyfriend loves to participate in foreplay. Hell yeah! Again, love to see that. Recently, this foreplay has revolved around the Lord of the Rings and hobbits. I'm going to go ahead and take that fist back. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he plays the part of Frodo, and I play the part of Samwise. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Okay. This was fun for us at first, as I hadn't had sex in cosplay before. However, it got boring for me fairly quickly. My boyfriend insists that this is the ultimate way to have sex. As it aligns with both of our interests. I tolerated this for a while as it didn't seem to affect the sex itself, but only the foreplay. However, this would change. How? However, this would change. My boyfriend insists on me calling him Frodo oh. when we do the deed. He keeps calling me his, quote, Precious little gardener. End quote. <laughs> now this scene Even I haven't seen the around. <laughs> yeah. I don't go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, even beyond the bedroom. He also now says he quote. Wants to drop the ring into Morador. End oh quote. Whenever he wants to have sex. He will not use anything else to refer to sex. Only he wants to drop the ring into Mordor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this, this, um, oh. let me just say now, I'm going to get my third pun in right now. Okay. This, uh, this type of dirty talk, not Frodo typical, my guy. <laughs> Frodo, 
That's a Filipino pun for sure. <laughs> Not a pr- oh. not a prototypical way of going. <laughs> you sound like my mother. Okay, moving on. <laughs> I have objected to things before, such as when he wanted to listen to the Lord of the Rings soundtrack while oh, no. we have sex, as well as not wanting to listen to this one indie band that he likes. <laughs> he has respected. I can only imagine that that's uh, the famous. What is it, Seabat? <laughs> that, that, that one, that one yeah. playlist that guy was fucking to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he has respected my objections in these circumstances and hasn't done them since. But I still need some advice here to ask him if we could stop the Hobbit sex or come to some sort of compromise. I'm not sure what to say, and I still want to date him as he is very nice. However, I worry this may be taking things a bit too far for me. End of story. Communication. You know, I, I feel like y'all went into this. Uh, it's it's weird to even call it a journey <laughs> of like kind of sexual awakening that you guys are going on. But I think you guys just need to talk it out and see you got to set boundaries, you know. Um, if this makes you uncomfortable, the best thing to do is, is tell your partner. Otherwise, you're just setting up your relationship to Mount Doom, you know? So, um, God damn it. Is that, is that that's a four? Is that a bonus? <laughs> is that a bonus pun? But yeah. Is it Mount Doom? It is Mount Doom. I, honestly, I, that was a real question. I wasn't questioning the knowledge. <laughs> I legit did not know if it was. It's been a while, Wikimaniac. Fun fact, Wikimaniacs, I don't wear it, but my wedding band is actually the one true ring. So that is a fun fact. Wait, I'll wear it. And you haven't watched it recently? I have, it's been a while since I watched it. But I'll wear it. I'm going to find it if it still fits me because I have fatter fingers now. But uh, I'll, I'll show it to everyone. It's a black tungsten. It's beautiful. Wow. Yeah, but yeah, that, I mean, to go with that, like, uh, I don't know. I mean, it is it is creepy, but I'm not going to shame them for, like, wanting their, like, you know, having a desire on how y'all want to do it in the bed. But it sounds like you're uncomfortable with that. Yeah. So I think really my best advice is just talk it out and sort it out. Find a middle ground and maybe in Middle Earth. <laughs> to- Jesus. Find something. That's Find five. Something. That's five. five. Oh my god! Find my something god. that'll like you know keep you happy and uh, yeah, just talk it out. All right. Uh, I guess my thing is pretty much what John said. Um, communication is key in all relationships, and by continuing to do stuff you don't want to do, uh, you're I don't know setting the expectation that yep. that's just something that you like doing. Um, also, it's only 21 days, so if he's, like, straight up adamant on this fucking Lord of the Rings shit, it's still early. You can fucking dip. Like, you can get out. That's no yeah. biggie. I know he's nice, but uh, if he doesn't respect your sexual desires, I don't know, wishes? I don't know. But if they don't respect, you know, what makes you feel comfortable and uncomfortable, then uh, that's not uh, a winning ingredient in a relationship. So I would just, you know, dip out early. But of, of course, like John said, communicate first. You don't have to dump him right away. Just see if, you know, just yeah. try old regular sex for a little bit. <laughs> just, or... say, just say, sorry, man. I'm not into this. <laughs> oh, sorry. God damn it. <laughs> God fuck it. We got to get out of the Lord of the Rings. I think it's, <laughs> it's time for an ad break. We've given John too much power. We got to get out. Hey, man, you got to keep doing it before I'm going to be our guard, so. (laughs) All right, bye, guys. We'll be right back. (laughs) This holiday season, I'll be giving thanks to our friends over at Manscaped. Everyone loves turkey and stuffing, but you'll be looking like a dessert with the help of Manscaped's Performance Package 4.0. The leaders in below-the-waist grooming have blessed you with the ultimate Thanksgiving dinner topic. Tell your in-laws about your new cutting-edge ball trimmer and gift yourself or the man of your life the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. I don't know if I'd tell your in-laws about that. (laughs) Trim your pumpkins by going to manscaped.com and using the code reddit for free shipping and a whopping 20% off. Think your holiday spread is good? It's time to give thanks to the Manscaped Performance Package 4.0, or as I like to call 
call it the performance package for your package. Ayo. Inside, you'll find their lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, weed whacker ear and nose hair trimmer, crop preserver ball deodorant, crop reviver toner, performance boxer briefs, and a travel bag to hold your goodies. Think of it as a cornucopia for your balls. Their Manscaped 4.0 trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. It also gives you the ability to turn on their 4000K LED spotlight on and off when you need it for a more precise shave plus It's waterproof. The Performance Package 4.0 also includes the Weed Whacker to chop your worst weeds up top in your nose and ears. This nose and ear hair trimmer uses a 9,000 RPM motor-powered 360-degree rotary dual-blade system to provide proprietary skin-safe technology, which helps prevent nicks, snags, and tugs in those delicate holes. And you can't forget the Manscaped's liquid formulations, the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, and Crop Reviver Toner Spray. They are like the pumpkin pie and ice cream after Thanksgiving dinner. Can't live without it. Your balls will be living in turkey heaven with these formulations. And on top of that, it's time to do some dishes with Manscaped shower products. Lather some Manscaped's refined body wash on with their brand new signature body buffer and give yourself the lather and rinse your body deserves. Lose the loofah and exfoliate your mates. No hygiene routine is complete without Manscaped's signature deodorant as well. A couple swipes of this and you'll be feeling oh so crisp. Gifting Manscaped is the ultimate hack to becoming the family favorite. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code reddit at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com when you use the code reddit. Be thankful this holiday season for the best gift of all from Manscaped. Your balls will thank you. And uh, (laughs) we're back, I hope. John, we're done with Lord of the Rings. It's oh, over, my man. Friend. We got one more story before we hit our This Day in History segment, written by the wonderful Alex from the amazing Weird Distractions podcast. And uh, that's also where we shout out the patrons. So if you're a patron and you've been waiting to hear that, you should know by now. It's been probably a month of this, but that's always at the end of This Day in History. We give a personal shout out to all the patrons, no matter what tier or membership you're It's a on. lot of y'all now, man. My God. Dude, it's insane. Uh, again, that's another number that I always freak out about. Because like I was... 120, almost 120 now. That's 120 names. No, last time I checked, it was 121. Oh, look at that. Even yeah. better. And, you know, I still freak out because I, when we had like two, I was like, this is crazy. This is the life. Yeah, so again, you guys are helping, and I say this in the This Day in History part, but again, you guys are really making this show possible. We wouldn't have money to pay Christina and to pay Alex, who write and edit for this show. Yeah. And uh, the Sean and Josh I, uh, would the be sh- burnt the fuck out, <laughs> yeah. and then it would just be this nonstop, just me and John. And we already know that uh, a lot of people like Josh uh, because they're racist. <laughs> anyways. Does Sean and I see any money at all? Absolutely not. <laughs> No. Someday. I mean, I see the Venmos. Again, my Venmo is at S-E-A-N-S-N-T-P-O-D. I'm going to start plugging uh, mine, too. <laughs> Your boy yeah. needs it. <laughs> no, you can't steal a bit, John. You have Damn to be it. original. Uh, cash out? But, uh, <laughs> cash out? Is that, All right, is, let's, is that copyright let's infringement? <laughs> uh, I might have to sue you, brother. I hate to say it. All right, let's hop into the last story. This is from r slash petty revenge. Ruin my wedding to propose. I will ruin your proposal. Mm. Juicy. So I, 35-year-old male, have a younger brother, Todd, 29-year-old male, who had a complicated birth and had to stay a month in the ICU. And because of that, My parents have always dotted on him and almost denied him nothing, even if it was to the detriment of my sister, Abby, 32-year-old female, and I. My mother, my brother drinks in on the attention and has on more than one occasion made himself the center of attention at either my, (coughs) my sister's, or a cousin's special events. Because of this... Abby and I have a strained relationship with Todd and our parents. Unfortunately, Todd met... (laughs) That's funny. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, Todd met and fell in love with Lucy, 24-year-old female, 
who announced her own pregnancy at the baby shower that my mom held for Abby. Oh, oh. no. They're one of those upstagers, huh? Oh, fuck these people already. Okay. Yeah. When I proposed to my wife, Michelle, 30 year old female, I just wanted to elope, but she really wanted to have her family there. So I invited my family out of obligation. While out, my best friend, Jim, 35 year old male, noticed a receipt from a jewelry store slipped out of Todd's pocket. Oh no. Jim confronted Todd about this, which led to an argument. Jim told me everything, and I told Todd that he was no longer going to be a groomsman because I knew he was going to propose at my wedding. Oh. Todd cried to our parents, which led to a blowout. In my parents' eyes, since Todd never admitted that he was going to propose to Lucy at my wedding, I was unfairly judging him. I refused and brought up Todd's past behavior. Yep. My parents couldn't refute this and got Todd to agree to not try anything at my wedding. That wasn't enough to convince me to let him be a groomsman, <coughs> but I warned him not to try anything at my, oh, but I warned him that if he, as a guest, were to try anything, that I would make him regret it. Fast forward to the wedding and surprise, surprise. Well, fucking did it, huh? Todd walked over to Lucy and proposed to her God. during Michelle's father-daughter dance oh, and did it no. in a way so that everyone would notice. Oh, no. Fuck Todd. Todd sucks. Cue my revenge. Dun, dun, dun. Jim and I had hired a woman to pretend to be Todd's side piece. <laughs> hey, I love this. I love it. <laughs> she cornered Todd and Lucy and claimed that she too was pregnant with his baby. Oh, oh. my God. Todd denied this, but... When she called his phone, parentheses, I gave her his number and messed with Todd's phone to incriminate him, and parentheses, it did not look good to Lucy. <laughs> Lucy threw the ring back at Todd and left in tears. When Todd looked up, he saw a smile on my face and he knew that it was me. And I didn't respond to a single call or text from him or my parents until after the honeymoon. Since then, Lucy has thrown Todd's stuff out and has been denying access to their kid. Oh, I guess. Oh, I guess Lucy already right had. Here. Yeah, I guess yeah. she already had the kid. Um, Todd is furious and is demanding that I clear his name. I sent him a text saying that I have no idea what he was talking about as well as a screenshot of a bill for the wedding and gave him a vague message demanding reimbursement for half of the wedding costs. <laughs> Michelle knew... <laughs> <laughs> Michelle knew the whole time what I was planning and gave me the green light after Todd ruined her moment with her dad. So, I felt pretty good. But now, even Abby thinks I maybe went too far. Mm. That's the end. It's, it sounds like a, he wants to end with, am I the asshole? But he never did. Uh, but Good. yeah. Because I was going to go. Because I could still use it, baby. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. I, I'm going to go with, it, it is a little overboard, but. It's an insane move. It, it's a, uh, yeah. It, 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 truly insane. <laughs> That is petty Unhinged. revenge as a definition. Holy fuck. Oh my God. Like, he. Okay, Todd seems like an asshole. Oh, yeah. He. They had to beg him to not propose. Yeah. And then he agreed not to propose. And then he proposed anyway, 
during the father daughter dance. Yeah. So, I'm like, you low key deserve. Yeah. So uh, he sounds like that fuck around and find out video. I don't know if that's been certain. The, <laughs> the chart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So he's like the classic example of fuck around and find out. And my boy, you did find out. Did you deserve oh like God. not having access to your kid? Maybe yeah, not. Wild. That is pretty low on me like to me at least um that's probably the part that i'm just like okay that is a little overboard because yeah you're breaking up a family family, right like you're robbing a kid an opportunity to have us it sucks to even call it a a stable household because it's if it's them two together you're probably going to create a little spawn of the devil it's going to be a toxic child it's going to be a spoiled little yeah, it's going to be a spoiled little child. So, but still, like, you never know what's going to happen. So that's probably, like, the only part that I'm like, y'all went a little extra. Because now this kid's probably not going to have a father figure, even though the father figure is kind of a dick. Yeah, I think maybe I would, you know, after the honeymoon, I would clear the name. Uh, <laughs> you know, let him have the two weeks of or one week or whatever of, like, oh, my God, my life is over. Uh, but I think I would eventually have, you know, said something to Lucy, but again, not to be, uh, not to give Lucy, you know, the benefit of the doubt. Uh, she kind of sounds like she sucks as well. Yeah. They both, she she announced her pregnancy at, at their sister's baby shower. So it's like they were made for each other. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. I think if, if it were me after I had my fun, uh, You know, I would have told because, you know, I don't want them dating anybody else and ruining more lives. You know what I mean? True. I would just keep the two demons together. And, uh, yeah. I would do something devilish on my end. I'd be like, okay, I'll clear your name if you pay for half the bill. It's pretty much blackmail. But that's just me. I think that's Loki what he implied. Yeah, because I'm, yeah, because I'm pretty petty too. (laughs) So I'd probably ask him like that. Because truly... You're only doing the father daughter dance, uh, you know. Hopefully, once, once in your you life, I mean? and that's a special yeah. moment. That's a special moment. Yeah. Uh, I, I, you know, that moment is always going to be a ruin for your wife yeah. and for her family. So, I mean, truly, you, you know, you, you fuck, do you fucked around you, and you, you found out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you fuck around at a ten, you're going to find out <laughs> at a ten. <laughs> <laughs> oh man but uh yeah that's it for that story i think it's time we get into this day in history welcome back wikimaniacs to our historical segment called this day in history i'm your host for potentially the first time ever josh shell sean could not do today so i'm hopping in for him This Day in History is a weekly series where we take a break from the chaos, smut, and downright weird things we find online to take you back in time to learn more about what happened on this day throughout history. Today's date is November 7th, and we're going to set sail 150 years ago to one of our most puzzling mysteries from the sea. The ocean is already mysterious, with reports claiming that about 80% of the cold waters have been untouched and unexamined by humans. So, when you add a missing ship, paranormal encounters, and folklore from the ocean floor up, you get some of the world's most unsolvable, unexplained situations. Today's mystery involves the Mary Celeste. The Mary Celeste was an American registered merchant sailing vessel that was actually built in Spencer's Island, Nova Scotia, and launched under British regulation as Amazon in 1861. The ship, according to Wikipedia, was transferred to American ownership and registration in 1868 when it acquired its new name. On November 7th of 1872, the Mary Celeste set sail from Staten Island, New York to Genoa, Italy. Some accounts claim that the boat set sail from New York City, so accounts seem to vary. Nonetheless, sources documented that 1,700 barrels of alcohol were on board with a total of 10 people, including Captain Briggs, his wife, and their two-year-old daughter. Based on accounts, the ship encountered some nasty weather. Its last known log entry from November 25th noted that it was near Azores. After that, things from and regarding the Mary Celeste seemingly went quiet. That is, until December 5th, a British ship called De Gratia encountered a seemingly abandoned Mary Celeste. The crew from the De Gratia noticed three feet or one meter of water in the hold and the longboat missing. But other than that, everything seemed to be fine. 
The cargo was still on board, along with the belongings of those who were on the Mary Celeste when it set sail. It was as if the crew evaporated into thin air. De Gracia's crew brought the vacant Mary Celeste to Gibraltar, a British overseas territory, in order to try and have the ship properly looked at by officials. According to Britannica, once in Gibraltar, British authorities conducted an investigation which ultimately found no evidence of foul play. As far as we know, those on the ship of the Mary Celeste have never been located. Many myths have come out of the mysterious disappearance of the Mary Celeste crew. Some believe a giant octopus or squid brought the Mary Celeste crew to their fate. Other theories include a possible mutiny gone bad or a pirate attack. There have even been allegations that the crew members participated in insurance fraud or dealt with water spouts. Seems like the longer the mystery bobs in and out of our minds, the more theories we as curious humans try to create to fill the void. What do you think happened to the Mary Celeste? Let us know over on our social media accounts or on the Cultivate Discord. Thanks for tuning in to today's This Day in History segment, McManiacs. This segment wouldn't have been made possible without the following resources, Wikipedia, UCL News Article, Encyclopedia Britannica, History.com, and the Smithsonian's Magazine website. It also wouldn't have been made possible without our amazing patrons. I'm going to try listing them off here. This is, uh, there's so many. I don't know how John and Sean do this every, every week, but thank you to Lonnie, Chiamaka, Indaria, Alexandria, Iona, Jamie Lee, Karen, Gabrielle, Alyssa, Rebecca, Brittany, Shifty Sphinx, Siddhartha, Lillianne, Sunlicious Supreme, Mayori, Alyssa, Carol, Jennifer, Jose, Sherry, Julie, Tegan, Linnea, Witty Metaphor, Sarah, Hugh, Evelyn, Christine, Kite, Velvet, Caitlin, Kelsey, Andrea, Jillian, Aaron, Kawina, Renee, Apolline, Rhonda, Stephanie, Rhiannon, Rhiannon? We'll go with that. <laughs> Christine, Juice Machine, Kate, Caroline, Renea, Marileona, Neen, Amanda, Adam, Jacqueline, Michelle, Ali, Ashley, Cicely, Haley, Brittany, Little Rosie, Ariori, Saskia, Sky, Lasolini, Amber, Reed, Noah, Itzel, Nelly, Ashley, Sasha, Zenthalo, Caitlin, Casey, Ringo, Paula, Dan, Rachel, Carrie Berry, Loaf Dean D, Ekaterina, Jen, Corey, Carter, Amber, Dominique, Marina, Chantal Sh Sanchez, Tiffany, Risa, Kieran, Drella, your girl Diana, Diana, <laughs> Lena, Nia, Jen, Crystal, Danielle, Michelle, Alexis, Jasmine, Ms. Doolittle, Marianne, Sarah, Free Gnomes, Susan, Phantom Fox 98, Dan, a Spooky Tales, Blue Raina, Katie, Lulia, Micah, Valentina, Alex, Taru, Aaron, Gabby, Lindsay, and Vina. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, I'm out of breath. We'll have to just speed that up a little bit. I was, I was very slow reading that, so <laughs> I apologize. But thank you, everyone. And thank you for listening to This Day in History. Now on to the show to close it out. And uh, we are back. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Christina. Thank you, patrons. Uh, let's go ahead and close out this episode. You know, go. I, uh, you guys. Oh, shit. Doing it backwards this time. Anxiety <laughs> ending? Holy moly. Yeah, because uh, you were like very smooth in the beginning. What's yeah, happening? I, was, I was pretty confident all the way up until now. Yeah, uh, you're thinking about it now, my guy. Yeah, I'm thinking about it now. Uh, if you want to find more of Reddit on Wiki, all the show mm. links are in the mm. show notes. <laughs> Fuck me. Uh, <laughs> we also have a, a website, redditonwiki.com. Yes. Or is it redditonwikipodcast.com? No, it's redditonwiki.com. It's been a year okay. and some change. Come on. You okay, got cool. It. Okay, cool. Well, that's in the show notes, too. So even if I fuck up, you should be able to figure it out. Uh yeah, that's it for this week. Love you guys. It's your boy, Sean. Almost called myself John. This has never <laughs> happened before. I've never closed out with anxiety, but the ball is rolling and I can't stop it. Okay, it's your boy, Sean. We got to end this episode. Holy fucking moly. Thank you guys so much for listening, supporting. We love you. John's also here. I'm scratching uh, you guys with my scratcher. Love, love, love you guys. Sorry. I don't know what happened here at the end. <laughs> oh my god. For the fifth time, it's your boy, Sean.